In the early 1970s, producer Albert S. Ruddy began planning for a comedy film revolving around American football. He envisioned a story where prisoners form a team to face off against guards. This concept eventually became the longest yard. For the lead role of Paul Krug, a disgraced former professional player, Ruddy wanted someone who could bring both athleticism and acting skills to the table. Burt Reynolds, already known for his roles in Deliverance and Seamus, emerged as the top choice due to his charismatic personality and physical prowess. To find other actors suitable for various roles, producers turned to agents across Hollywood. Eddie Albert, renowned for his comedic timing, landed the part of coach Warden Hazen after impressing during auditions. Meanwhile, Mike Henry, a former NFL player himself, took on the character of Granville Dunlap, captaining the opposing team. Casting the inmate players proved more challenging since they needed to appear authentic as athletes, while also demonstrating believable camaraderie. Among those casts were familiar faces like James Hampton, whom viewers might recognize from Shenandoah. Additionally, actual sports stars joined the ensemble. Joe Cap, a Canadian Football League star quarterback, played Sampson. Purvis Atkins, another pro athlete, portrayed caretaker Folsom. Notably, Bernadette Peters, famous for her work in musical theater, appeared briefly as a love interest for Reynolds' character, despite initial reluctance towards taking the small part. However, she later admitted it provided good exposure and led to further opportunities. Chemistry tests between primary cast members helped solidify relationships before shooting commenced. For instance, scenes featuring heated exchanges between crew and Hazen required careful calibration by directors to maintain balance between humor and tension. Similarly, establishing rapport among the inmates involved trust falls, literally and figuratively, ensuring unity on set mirrored what audiences saw on screen. Ultimately, the diverse backgrounds of these performers contributed significantly to the success of The Longest Yard. Each brought unique perspectives, allowing them to inhabit their respective roles convincingly and contribute to the overall dynamic of this classic prison sports dramedy. The Longest Yard, directed by Robert Aldrich in 1974, offers a unique blend of comedy and drama set in a prison football game. Known for his distinct visual style, Aldrich focused on realism and grit, often utilizing handheld cameras and natural lighting. This approach created a raw, authentic atmosphere fitting for the film's narrative. Collaboration played a key role in shaping The Longest Yard. Aldrich worked closely with actor Burt Reynolds, who also served as associate producer, allowing for seamless integration between performance and direction. Their rapport resulted in a dynamic portrayal of the lead character, Paul Crewe. Aldrich drew inspiration from various sources, including his own military background, which influenced the disciplined yet chaotic environment depicted in the movie. Additionally, he took cues from documentary films, employing improvisational techniques during rehearsals to capture genuine moments. When it came to casting, Aldrich sought out actors with strong athletic abilities alongside their acting skills. He believed that having credible athletes would add another layer of authenticity to the intense sports sequences. To achieve this balance, several professional players were included in the ensemble, creating realistic rivalries both on and off the field. Costume design was equally crucial to defining each character's personality and social status within the confines of the prison system. Designer Lorraine Gary carefully selected clothing items that reflected individual identities while adhering to institutional constraints. Overall, Aldrich's directorial vision brought together all these elements to create a compelling cinematic experience. By focusing on realism and collaboration, he crafted a timeless tale filled with humor, tension, and camaraderie, a true testament to his skillful storytelling technique. The Longest Yard is a classic 1974 movie that has stood the test of time. It tells the story of a disgraced football player who must form a team of inmates to play against the guards. The film is filled with humor, drama, and action, making it a favorite among many. One of the most memorable characters in the movie is the coach, played by the talented Eddie Albert. His portrayal of a strict and determined coach is both funny and inspiring. The scenes between him and the main character, played by Burt Reynolds, are some of the best in the movie. The Longest Yard has had a significant impact on my life. It was the first movie that introduced me to the world of football, and I have been a fan ever since. The movie's themes of perseverance, teamwork, and redemption have stayed with me throughout my life. Do you have a favorite character or scene from The Longest Yard? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below.
As we delve deeper into this classic, you'll discover many surprising and emotional moments. From shocking twists to heartwarming scenes, this movie has it all. So, stay tuned to learn more about the many funny, shocking, and sad facts about The Longest Yard. You won't want to miss it. The Longest Yard, set in a prison, presented unique challenges in its production. To create the gritty atmosphere, producers chose a real Texas jail as the primary location, the Houston County Prison Farm. This choice added authenticity, but also brought difficulties. For instance, crew members had to share space with prisoners, leading to scheduling conflicts and security concerns. Set designers transformed the prison interiors to suit the storyline. They built a functional football field inside the facility, complete with goalposts and seating for spectators. Recreating this setting required careful planning and execution, ensuring both safety and historical accuracy. Another notable aspect was the casting of actual football players alongside professional actors. This decision contributed to the film's realistic depiction of sports action scenes. However, managing such a diverse cast posed additional hurdles related to coaching, choreography, and injury prevention. Despite these challenges, technological innovations assisted the process. Advances in sound recording allowed clear dialogue capture even amidst loud crowd noise. Additionally, improved camera technology facilitated smoother motion capture during intense sport sequences. However, some methods remain traditional. Instead of CGI, stunt doubles were used extensively for dangerous scenes. Furthermore, practical effects like pyrotechnics created convincing explosions, enhancing the dramatic effect. All things considered, the making of The Longest Yard proved to be as challenging as it was rewarding, pushing boundaries in both logistics and cinematic artistry. The Longest Yard, released in 1974, has stood the test of time as a beloved sports comedy film. Set against the backdrop of a prison, the story revolves around Paul Crew, a disgraced football player who must form a team of inmates to take on the guards. This underdog tale features a cast of memorable characters, each bringing their own unique flair to the screen. Directed by Robert Aldrich, known for his work in various genres, including action, drama, and horror, the Longest Yard offers a fresh perspective on the typical sports narrative. With its distinct setting, the film delivers humor, camaraderie, and heart, while shedding light on themes like redemption and resilience. Among the standout performances is Burt Reynolds' portrayal of Paul Crew. His charismatic delivery and nuanced emotions add depth to the character, making him both relatable and engaging. Another notable performance comes from Eddie Albert, playing Coach Hazen, whose cunning antics contrast perfectly with Crew's rebellious spirit. Adding to the mix is a talented ensemble featuring James Hampton, Mike Henry, and Bernadette Peters, among others, creating a dynamic and entertaining atmosphere throughout the film. Assembling a motley crew of inmate players, Crew teaches them discipline and strategy despite facing adversity along the way. Their journey culminates in an epic match between the prisoners and the guards, a riveting climax filled with tension, excitement, and unexpected twists. As Crew leads his fellow inmates onto the field, viewers can't help but root for their success, even if victory seems improbable. While some aspects may feel dated compared to modern cinema, The Longest Yard remains relevant through its universal appeal and timeless messages. Its blend of humor, drama, and athleticism resonates with audiences today just as much as it did nearly five decades ago. Ultimately, this classic film serves as a reminder that second chances and perseverance can lead to triumph over seemingly insurmountable odds. In the creation of The Longest Yard, both the musical score and soundtrack play crucial roles in enhancing the story's mood and emotions. While a musical score refers to the background music specifically composed for the film, the soundtrack consists of licensed songs used throughout. For The Longest Yard, the score was crafted by renowned composer Jerry Fielding. Known for his work on Western films, Fielding brought a unique blend of tension and excitement through his compositions. His ability to manipulate instrumentation created an atmosphere fitting for this prison football drama. For instance, he often incorporated brass sections to accentuate intense moments during games or conflicts among inmates. On the other hand, the soundtrack features popular tunes from various artists that add another layer of immersion. These tracks are carefully selected to resonate with specific scenes or characters. An example would be using upbeat songs during training montages to reflect the team's growing spirit and camaraderie. Interviews with those involved reveal the meticulous process behind combining these two elements seamlessly. They aim to strike a balance between diegetic music 
like radios playing in cells, and non-diegetic music, such as Fielding's original pieces. This required close collaboration between Fielding, director Robert Aldrich, and music supervisors. Fielding himself described his approach as one where music serves the scene rather than dominates it. He believed in creating subtle cues that underscored the action, thereby heightening viewer engagement without being overly intrusive. Thus, whether it's the rousing melodies of the score or the catchy rhythm of the soundtrack, every note in the longest yard contributes significantly to its overall impact. Together, they shape our perception of characters, propel narratives forward, and intensify dramatic climaxes. In the production of The Longest Yard, then Governor Jimmy Carter played a crucial role in facilitating the film's production in Georgia. Eddie Albert, who starred in the movie, was not only a talented actor, but also a dedicated environmentalist. He used various platforms, including television shows and lectures, to spread awareness about pollution and even helped launch the first Earth Day on April 22, 1970, his birthday. Ed Lauder, another actor in the film, had the unique distinction of appearing in both the 1974 and 25 versions of The Longest Yard. His appearance in the 2005 version was unplanned, as he just happened to be on the studio lot the day of filming, and Adam Sandler added him to the golf scene. In The Longest Yard, one of the most iconic scenes is the final game, where the inmates' football team faces off against the guards. Director Robert Aldrich masterfully builds tension through tight shots of the players' faces, highlighting their determination and fear. The wide-angle shots of the crowded stadium create a sense of overwhelming anticipation. Burt Reynolds, who plays the lead role of Paul Crew, recalls the intensity of filming this scene. It was electric, you could feel the energy from the crowd, and it wasn't even a real game. The cinematography, by Joseph F. Barak, enhances this energy with its use of low-angle shots, which make the players seem larger than life. Another unforgettable scene is the opening sequence, where Crew, a disgraced former professional player, is brought to the prison. The use of handheld cameras gives a gritty, realistic feel, contrasting sharply with the glamour of the professional football world. This scene sets the tone for the entire film, emphasizing the harsh realities of prison life. Editor Michael Luciano also plays a crucial role in building suspense. In the final game scene, quick cuts between the action on the field and the reactions of the crowd keep the audience on the edge of their seats. The sound design, with its booming crowd noises and the sharp smack of bodies colliding, further immerses the viewer in the game. The Longest Yard's impact is evident in its enduring popularity and the numerous remakes it has inspired. The film's raw, unapologetic portrayal of prison life and its exploration of themes like power, redemption, and team spirit continue to resonate with audiences today. In the making of The Longest Yard, Burt Reynolds initially aimed to shoot the film in his hometown of West Palm Beach, Florida. However, permission was not granted. Still, references to West Palm Beach remain in the movie through explicit mentions and a false entrance sign, even though scenes were actually taped in Savannah, Georgia. Reynolds reunited with actor Mike Henry in subsequent films like Smokey and The Bandit, Interestingly, while playing Sheriff Justice's son in those movies, Henry had previously appeared alongside Reynolds in The Longest Yard as Nate Scarborough. One notable aspect of The Longest Yard concerns football history, the dropkick field goal scored by the movie's Mean Machine team continues to have real-life significance today. As per NFL regulations, this type of score can still occur under specific circumstances. Indeed, Doug Flutie managed just such a feat during the 25 season while playing for the New England Patriots. Notably, prior to this instance, the most recent successful dropkick conversion took place back in 1941. Released in 1974, The Longest Yard quickly resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of comedy and sports. The film's protagonist, a disgraced football player, struck a chord with viewers who found his struggles relatable. This classic underdog story, set in a prison, became a cultural touchstone, inspiring future films and television shows. The Longest Yard tackled themes relevant to its time, such as the criminal justice system and the power dynamics within prison walls. By portraying a group of inmates finding camaraderie through football, the movie sparked discussions about rehabilitation and the potential for second chances. Influencing pop culture, the film's iconic characters and quotable lines left an indelible mark. The distinct personalities of the inmate players, along with their memorable banter, have been often referenced and paid homage to in various media. Moreover, The Longest Yard contributed to the broader cultural conversation surrounding football and its place in American society.
By highlighting the sport's ability to unite individuals from diverse backgrounds, the movie underscored the potential for sports to transcend social boundaries. In analyzing the cultural and social impact of The Longest Yard, one must consider its enduring legacy. Decades after its release, this classic film remains a beloved piece of American cinema, continuing to captivate audiences and contribute to discussions on relevant social themes. Its influence can be seen in various aspects of pop culture, demonstrating its lasting impact on our collective imagination. In the movie The Longest Yard from 1974, Burt Reynolds' brother Jim plays the part of the player in the black jersey with the number 65. He can be seen running alongside Reynolds during the final play of the game. Richard Keel, who also stars in the film, is known for his work beyond The Longest Yard. In 2003, he completed a historical novel called The Kentucky Lion, the Cassius Marcellus Clay story. The co-author of this novel is Pamela Wallace, who won an Academy Award for her screenplay for the movie Witness in 1985, starring Harrison Ford. Eddie Albert, another actor in The Longest Yard, had a varied career and expressed his opinions on the films he worked on. Despite earning two Oscar nominations for his performances in Roman Holiday in 1953 and The Heartbreak Kid in 1972, he did not enjoy working on these movies. This just goes to show that even in successful productions, there can be challenges and difficulties behind the scenes. Released in 1974, The Longest Yard quickly gained popularity among audiences and critics alike. The film, starring Burt Reynolds, showcases a unique blend of comedy and drama set in a prison football game. Critics praised the movie for its unconventional plot and Reynolds' charismatic performance. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film three out of four stars, highlighting Reynolds' ability to balance humor and intensity. Newsweek's Paul D. Zimmerman also lauded the actor's performance, stating, Reynolds, with his easy charm and raffish grin, is perfectly cast. Audiences connected with the film's underdog story and memorable characters. Rotten Tomatoes reports an audience approval rating of 78%, with viewers appreciating the movie's ability to entertain and engage. The Longest Yard received two Golden Globe nominations, including Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, and Best Actor, Musical or Comedy for Burt Reynolds. These nominations recognize the film's unique approach to storytelling and Reynolds' standout performance. Additionally, the movie was nominated for a Writers Guild of America Award for Best Comedy Adapted from Another Medium. This recognition underscored the film's successful adaptation from its original source material, a 1968 British film titled The Longest Yard. These accolades highlight the film's impact on the comedy and sports genres. They also emphasize Burt Reynolds' contribution to the movie's success, solidifying his status as a leading man in Hollywood. The nominations and positive reception have helped The Longest Yard endure as a classic film, appealing to new generations of viewers. In the biography published in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, Volume 7, actor Eddie Albert shares his experience working on the set of The Longest Yard. During production, tensions rose between director Robert Aldrich and fellow cast member Michael Conrad. Aldrich even referred to Conrad as the Polish princess. But that changed after a memorable scene between Paul Crew and Scarborough. Upon seeing Conrad's exceptional performance, Aldrich presented him with a candy bar, moving Conrad to tears and putting an end to the derogatory nickname. Meanwhile, off-screen, producer Albert S. Ruddy found another way to make money from the film by selling the heavily damaged Citroen featured in one of the scenes. Despite its condition, someone bought it for 7000 simply because it appeared in this classic movie that just goes to show how iconic and valuable props can become due to their association with popular films. Even unexpected items can find new life beyond the big screen. In the heat of filming The Longest Yard, Burt Reynolds, who played the lead role, bonded with real-life convicts from a local prison. He even invited some of them to appear as extras, adding authenticity to the movie. During the production, Reynolds' fast-paced lifestyle was legendary. He would often perform his own stunts, including driving a golf cart at high speeds, which ultimately led to a few crashes on set. Reynolds wasn't the only one taking risks. Eddie Albert, who played the warden, decided to perform a dangerous stunt himself. In one scene, he's seen hanging upside down from a balcony, which left the crew in awe. The film's director, Robert Aldrich, had a reputation for being tough but fair. He encouraged improvisation, allowing the cast to add their personal touches to their characters. This resulted in a more natural and engaging performance from the entire cast.
The Longest Yard also faced challenges securing locations for filming. The production team was denied access to several prisons before finally gaining permission to film at the Georgia State Prison. This late approval led to a rushed production schedule, with the crew working around the clock to meet their deadlines. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew of The Longest Yard managed to create a timeless classic, filled with humor, camaraderie, and intense football action. The film has since become a favorite among football and movie fans alike. In the early 1970s, actor Ed Lauder made his Broadway debut in The Great White Hope. Later, he shared screen time with Burt Reynolds in the movie The Longest Yard, and then reunited with him in Hooper two years later. On the other hand, Lance Fuller almost secured the role of a young boy in The Yearling, but lost it when the production got delayed, and he grew too old for the character. Instead, Claude Jarman Jr. took on the part. These actors each played their roles in shaping memorable moments in cinema history. Released in 1974, The Longest Yard quickly gained popularity and became a classic in the sports comedy genre. The film, starring Burt Reynolds, showcases a unique blend of humor, action, and drama that has left a lasting impact on future filmmaking. This movie's influence can be seen in various aspects of popular culture, particularly in the sports and comedy genres. Its innovative approach to combining humor with the grid of football has inspired numerous filmmakers to create their own unique blends of sports and comedy. One notable example of The Longest Yard's impact is the 25 remake of the same name, which followed the original's formula while adding a modern twist. Additionally, the film's influence extends to television, with shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Good Place incorporating elements of sports and comedy reminiscent of The Longest Yard. The Longest Yard has also inspired other films that explore the theme of unlikely alliances and underdog stories in the world of sports. Movies such as Remember the Titans and Invincible share similar themes and storylines, demonstrating the film's lasting impact on the genre. Moreover, the film's success has solidified Burt Reynolds' status as a leading man in Hollywood, paving the way for his future roles in films like Smokey and The Bandit and Deliverance. In conclusion, The Longest Yard has left an indelible mark on film history, inspiring future filmmakers and contributing to the evolution of the sports comedy genre. Its influence can be seen in various aspects of popular culture, from movies and television shows to the careers of prominent actors. In The Longest Yard, viewers can spot early instances of product placement, including Eastern Airlines, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, Tony Llama Boots, Gatorade, Rawlings, Coca-Cola, Continental Trailways, Adidas, Goodyear, and Muriel Cigars. These brands were prominently displayed in the stadium scenes. Richard Keel, who played Jaws, experienced fear due to his acrophobia, which was heightened by his large stature. To overcome this challenge, Martin Grace stepped in during riskier sequences, mimicking Keel's movements despite their significant height difference. Surprisingly, audiences couldn't discern between the two while viewing the film. Additionally, fans might be intrigued to learn that lead actor Burt Reynolds pledged Phi Delta Theta fraternity during his college years. This fun fact adds another layer of personal connection for those familiar with Greek life on university campuses. Overall, these behind-the-scenes details offer insightful glimpses into both the production process of The Longest Yard and its cast members' unique characteristics and backgrounds. Delving deeper into the lives of actors and the making of movies allows us to appreciate cinema artistry further. In the movie The Longest Yard, several cast members brought their real-life athletic experience to the big screen. Burt Reynolds, who plays Paul Crew, had been a collegiate athlete, playing for Florida State University and later briefly joining the Baltimore Colts. Mike Henry, Ed Hutchinson's portrayer, also played professionally for both the Pittsburgh Steelers and Los Angeles Rams. Joe Cap, cast as Granville Nitnis's Barrett, even led the Minnesota Vikings as their quarterback. Additionally, Ray Nitschke and Purvis Atkins lent their talents to the film, Ray being a formidable middle linebacker for the Green Bay Packers, while Purvis suited up for the Los Angeles Rams, Washington Redskins, and Oakland Raiders. A fun fact regarding the actor Richard Keel, best known for playing the menacing Jedi in The Longest Yard, pertains to his son Richard George, who appeared in The Spy Who Loved Me. You might remember him as the young boy excitedly pointing towards James Bond emerging from the ocean in his amphibious vehicle. After making a successful career resurgence through Boogie Nights, Burt Reynolds became involved in various independent productions. Among them was The O in Ohio, where Danny DeVito ultimately secured a role initially meant for Reynolds due to scheduling conflicts. 
Regrettably, Burke couldn't join Parker Posey, a self-proclaimed fan of his work, in this particular endeavor. Did you know that The Longest Yard first hit the big screen in 1974? This classic has left a lasting impression on many, even decades after its release. We're curious, how did this movie affect you personally? Maybe it made you laugh, cry, or even inspired you to play football. Whatever your experience, we'd love to hear your stories. By sharing your memories, you can help create a sense of community among fellow cinephiles who also hold this film dear. Perhaps you were influenced by the groundbreaking performances or unique storytelling style. Who knows, maybe this movie sparked your interest in cinema and shaped your taste in films today. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to join us in exploring more cinematic gems like The Longest Yard. Let's keep the conversation going and celebrate our shared love for